Let's move on then to cash, as we were just about to start talking about. It is sort of the American beloved map. We've seen it many times over yeah. the last couple of days. How do we feel this is going to go down for these two teams now? Aggress Aggressive. Oh, no, actually, let's no. change that. I think it's going to be super passive. Okay. You, you just didn't want to jinx you, it? You or? don't really believe that, do you? No, I don't. Like no, that no, it's, no. No. it's just going to be much of the same. I think we're going to see a lot of pushes <laughs> from Cloud9 on the CT side. Uh, I think Pace out of the Immortals guys, they look like they're on fire now uh, off of that, that second map. So it's, the good it's old just going to be a clash, not of clans, of Ooh. teams. It's the good old standby. If, if it isn't working, then don't fix it. If it isn't working, yeah. don't fix it. I like that. Is that close to if it is working, don't fix it? <laughs> you, you just said the same thing, right? I thought you said if it isn't working. Yeah. Should we answer <laughs> some social media <laughs> questions? Yeah, yes, How please. would you feel about I that? I need help. Okay, yeah. this weekend, you guys on Reddit have been sending us your questions, and we have one right here. Thoughts on lesser-known Brazilian teams coming up into the scene. So, like Payne, for instance, and maybe some of the others from the South America qualifier. That's from You've Won. Interesting Thanks. thing about Brazil uh, is there's a lot of the old 1.6 talent that still plays within teams, like mm. Bit1 and you know those kind of guys, Spaka. Kogu. Kogu from time to time, he's made a few appearances here. There, you have like a club of people you wish were good, and a club of people <laughs> who he excited. wishes were good. Yeah. There's him. There's Markaloff. There's some other people in there. We're, yeah. we're talking about Brazil right now, and I think Pain Gaming they impressed a lot of people at this event. Obviously, they went to the Mountain Dew uh, the finals there. They didn't really manage to get away with anything at that event. Some close games versus Splice, I believe. Um, I know before that, I, you know, they, they weren't really up to much other than in, in their scene. So for them to, to be at this event and show some good form and some good strategies, I think there's a lot of talent. And as Steele mentioned in his interview, they're very passionate about Counter-Strike. Yeah. I think that was Stewie actually that mentioned that. Yeah. So didn't, didn't, didn't mention Kogu, unfortunately. Mm. No, surprisingly. Should have. Still did mention, though, the, 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 the sort of desire to have more and up upcoming Brazilian talent. That's why yeah. he was so happy that Payne were able to show themselves. I wonder what, what FNX will do now that he's back in uh, Brazil. Team up with Kogu? Maybe, probably not. Oh. I wonder what he'll actually do. Like uh, he, because he could nurture a very young team that could become like a project for him to you know get, get a bunch of uh, new talent around him and build up with them, and then sure, yeah, maybe, maybe attack it like that. Because I, uh, I don't know what his plans are, but he could definitely help nurture the scene. Because most of the players, as we see, when they get to a certain level, they move away from uh, South America. You know, they, they move yeah, up to the North American a, region. That's a strange thing, isn't it? Even we've seen teams go to, to Europe before. We saw that uh, red, uh, red, red Reserve team, which is where yeah. KNG is from. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Brazilian talent or, out there. Were they or Orbit? Was that another Brazilian team? Orbit? That I, I think that they became Red Reserve. Oh, right. That, that was them. Okay, cool. We'll talk about the team. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very early in the morning right now, so I yeah. may be wrong in that, in that regard. But I believe uh, that's the case there. Yeah. It's super encouraging. I mean, I think it's 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 really great, right? Um, our our game is after all called Global Offensive, yep. so you mm -hmm. know why not get the South American scene in there? Um, I know there's there's some some pushes going on right now to get more Counter Strike active in South Africa. Um, so that's pretty interesting. From whom? Uh, different organizations. I think I think some of it is ESL related, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I, th I think there's different stuff going on. Um, okay. I keep hearing about it anyway. Um, and also, uh, obviously, in China, we've been hearing about it. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's slowly expanding, uh, you know, across the globe, which is, which is, I think, good news. Indeed. Look how laid back uh, Automatic <laughs> looks right now. So a chill. Bit of a smug look on his face there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, where has Jordan Smugly gone? Smugly leaning in his chair. Shroud's down there sleeping. Do you think Jordan's off, like, uh, massaging people's wrists? He might just go to the bathroom, maybe get in a banana. More likely that, probably, isn't it? More likely the bathroom. Yeah, well, that's always a good place to go on a break. I'm mesmerized by the keyboard in the background. <laughs> that, yes, that's to catch your attention. Do we have any more social media questions? I'm sure we do. I've I, really like I could, I could oh, find some animal facts of you if you're interested. I'll try and do some magic. Uh, you want animal facts first. Okay, give me some animal facts. <laughs> and about then whales or hippos. Yeah, well, that, no, that not threw hippos. me off so they're much. Not, no, 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 look. So what, where's this come from? Why did you mention this? Because it's an interesting fact. Listen, um, <laughs> if if you go if you, if you take a hippo and you go back in time and you find what is the what is the sort of closest ancestor that it has, it's a whale. Let me just get in my time machine, Anders. And what it what it means what it means this is, this is the good part. What it means is, at some point, whales came onto the land, yep. mm -hmm. and then some of them became hippos, and some of them went back into the water and became whales again. Well, they didn't all leave the water. No, obviously not. But a species of. <laughs> 
fish came onto the land. That's and pretty they cool. They became hippos, and then they went back in the water and became whales. That's madness. That is crazy. You know what else is crazy? We're seeing this map again. Are we talking about the teams more? No. The, which okay. team? Would you I like us to talk about the teams more? You talk about. No, we could do that. Definitely, Lef. Yeah, if you want to. I'm just trying to help out. No. <laughs> 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 quite clearly, <laughs> quite clearly trying to help out. Um, one of the interesting things, I think, is the way that the, the double orp has played into this tournament, right? I'm not sure if it is the way that Immortals want to go forward, uh, especially with, with a lot of events coming their way, but it seems to be effective in this minor, that's for sure. The KNG and the Henny factor. Now, something that I think is interesting is KNG, to me, seems like more of a hybrid player, and I think maybe some instances he can also be better with the orp than Henny. Henny is, like, really sporadic. I think that he can be very aggressive and hit a lot of shots with it and almost be uh, the initiator of the attacks, uh, and I think we're going to see that a lot on, on Keishu, especially on, on this T well, side. Do you notice some of the shots that Henny takes are some of the kinds where he, like, he jumps into a corner and just flicks with the AWP, yeah. and, and that will, if you are having a really confident day and a really good day, you know, that that's almost impossible to beat. Like, you, you're going to get shot down by someone like Henny, but if you're a bit off, then you're going to miss those shots, and then you get punished, yeah. you know? Um, there are smarter opers out there uh, who are, I think, who are better at sort of edging in kills, and, and they play a safer style and, and maybe a more intelligent style. I think, I mean, a, a, another good example of that, you don't have to bring up the Danish people every once in a while. KGB is someone who, who's pretty good at, at, at playing intelligently yeah. with the AWP, you know? I agree. I think uh, he, he fits a, a role very well with that AWP, but it, it feels like with this Immortals roster, both of the players... I don't think that either of them fit a main consistent AWP role for Immortals. That's mm. a weird one for them going forward, I think. Like, Henny can just be the AWP, but I don't think he's, like, consistent. I think he's sporadic in his performances. So, what would you do about that? I feel like between the two, they have enough AWP power. Yes, I agree. Okay, between the so two of them, so you need to work out what you need for what situation. Train T-Side, for right. example, they were giving the AWP to KNG, first of all, when they went to go pick towards Vines. Uh, sometimes it was when it was going for team mid picks, it was Henny, so it just changed. And I think yeah. on this map, we're going to see it change hands a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how close we are to starting. We just saw Immortals there sitting down and getting ready. Did they but huddle? They did huddle. We saw them huddle. Mm -hmm. And I'm just being told that we're going to go to the casters. So Perfect. Thank you so much. No for more normal facts. All right. For your, yeah, but, but key some up, for, get some ready for, for when we I've got, I've wrap up. Plenty. Yeah. Cool. A lot. Nice one. Thank you. Um, I'm going to hand back to Henry and Sadikus to go into this game number three, map number three. There's a few things in life that make me happy, Henry. What's that? Uh, race cars, my dog, Fernando Alonso winning races, which doesn't happen very much anymore. Okay. You sometimes when we cast together. And this is absolutely the greatest of them all. This what is the is best use of a bike bell I have ever seen. Practical, sure. So you're hey. walking down there, you got hot coffee, get out of the way. Get out the way. Yeah. Move. No, but yeah. like seriously, how amusing is this? Coffee wakes you up in the morning, it puts you in a good mood, and then you go, ah, oh, that's that's so cool. That's pretty nice. Is that it's better than a made, fidget or? spinner. Yeah. No, nah, Mihai made it apparently. Wow, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. That's brilliant. Well, it's brilliant. I love it. It's a uh, rare appearance there from the bike bell used on something else. So Yeah. Yeah, you know what doesn't make me happy? What's that? Actually, I don't have time for that. Let's get into the game. Cloud9 Immortals, map three. It's on Keish. It is indeed. And Cloud9 significantly dropping off from their first map performance. Immortals stepping up. KNG especially. That CD side DAWP looked amazing. Cash, always an interesting map. It's been played a lot this tournament. Probably the most played map by far. And it's going to be CT side star for Cloud9 here. So... We'll have a look at the buy for the T side, of course. That's Immortals. No Superman purchases here. Henny with one smoke, two flashbangs. Most teams do favor towards the A bomb site. Two players heading that side of the map with the smoke as well. So Henny might be trying to bait out an A execution here. He might smoke towards highway. He's got a teammate ready in squeaky door as well. This is almost certainly an A fake. You can see the CTs pushing B storage, trying to get information, and they might get taken down. So this tactic might be actually working out very nicely in more ways than one for Immortals. Leaving Shroud in Sunroom. This is the barred off corner. It is. <laughs> we haven't seen it in a long time. It's been a while. It's only called the barred off corner when a CT player's here, by the way. The barred off corner. When he got the three man epic spray down. So Henny's about to smoke highway from what I can see. Actually, right I now. think he whiffed when he was here. That was a play cool. The three man epic spray down was in Cologne when I was on his team. Right. I had to suffer through that. <laughs> smoke deployed. The fake begins and the bomb comes towards B. It's down to Shroud now, really. This is all for naught. It doesn't really matter Ooh. that much. Wall past Shroud. Shroud should get two kills there. Maybe three. Sees them. Oh, oh he's doing a bar God. Off. It is the barred off corner. It really <laughs> is. It's cursed. Oh, God. Never go there as a CT. 
Michael get to frag Shrewd. <laughs> <laughs> Steel goes back the other way as a result of this because he's open to pass back to A. It's fallen apart. If they lose this round now, oh god, Shroud's got to be absolutely the, sitting there shaking. He could have joined the pack and knifed them. But that's unbelievable because they had the round done. Automatic f killed everyone that was on the flank. Killed every, or excuse me, on the fake. This now they've split up. This is the kill that wins it because that's bomb. If nothing can get this kill with 17 seconds remaining, they're in a good position and they're fine. He's going to get rotated around from behind. Bolts has a very, very narrow window by which he has to get this kill, pick up the bomb, and get the plant, and nothing knows it. So Cloud9 will survive. But dear God, Shroud. Okay. That won't come in, I don't think. That's Ooh. pretty good. I didn't think he was going to get that down. I didn't think he would either, but that's a, pretty much as good as it's going to get. Shroud lives to see another day. Amazing positioning, completely shut it down. Very well read in terms of situation, but can't land on a single shot there. It can be a difficult weapon sometimes. You missed the first shot trying to read the chain, but that was not good enough, I'm afraid. He had so much time to work out what's going on. He could have just sat there and watched him for another five seconds. He seemed to get at least one kill there, and we don't see the replay of that. But uh, Automatic gets the first two kills. You know, to be fair, it's been a while since Shroud's been on the front page of Reddit, so he did need a clip. We almost got to see it. Yeah, I guess that is it. No, he got, he got it. Yeah. I hate to see that, but they do win the round. Unfortunately, now, Mortal's plan, they'll be getting AKs out in the third. So I'm not a big fan of this buy, you know. When the AKs, you know they're coming out, getting MP9s and UMPs, like the UMPs, I guess, fine. But Stewie, he wants to save this weapon. It's going to be a difficult round for them going forward. You can see Skadoodle with just the USP. He wants to bring out the AWP in the first gun round. So he wants to survive this, maybe get a couple of frags and get that AWP. So he's reading it quite nicely. He's got 2K in the bank, so he can almost certainly buy the AWP next round. He needs to survive this round, basically. Okay. Good shot, Lucas. How's that happen? Um, cause because Cloud9 seem to let it happen every single time they're up against pistols on round two. Yeah. Nice amount of PT Fitty. I haven't seen one of those in a while. And it might get a kill, Stewie! They're giving up mid, and he doesn't even consider the possibility as he walks around the corner. Lack of foresight. As Henny, no jokes, takes down Shroud. Still an opportunity. Look, look, look at this! Would you just look at it? Bombs in B. What is going Steel's on? Steel's just killed Stewie. It's planted. Give up. You gotta run away. And and at least nothing is already on his way to B. Because the problem now is Skadoodle's locked in A. He's got the kill, but he's late. And they've got to find Henny immediately when they arrive. This could be a bit dicey. If Henny gets one kill, brings it to 1v1, he's gonna get a weapon there. He's in checkers right now. Time ticking away. Nothing. Might have to make some noise soon. They managed to get the frag, so it's okay, but still a lot closer than it had to be. And now we know there's going to be such a sick buy for Immortals next round. They already got the bomb down in the pistol. That's going to be two in a row. Finding three kills as well. Doesn't get much better than that. Cloud9 struggling in the second round there, but they do win it. All ball come out for Skadoodle, I believe. He's got $6,300 now, so let's drop the UMP. Surely they bring an all power here. Yeah, just a, there it is. Nothing by it. He'll drop it for Skidoodle here. So there's balancing the funds. Nothing's keeping the orb. I guess so. What, what is going spawn? on? Well, he's got the B spawn. Yeah, but still. Drops down. Smoke in front of him. It's not it's just beside him. So he didn't quite catch him off. He's going to get away. No, he's not. Bolts is going to take him down. And Shroud has to be careful not to go in and make the same mistake. Well, nothing, like he said, with the spawn. Not known to be an awful whatsoever. Goes to the pick, gets flashed, has to run back through the smoke, Bolt finds him. Now they can slow things right down. Orb has not been recovered, and another shot through the smoke. That's Lucas to find Automatic. Looking very promising now for Immortals. As Automatic gets dropped. You'd only expect the Immortals to win this round, right? They made the last two extremely close in yeah. bad situations with pistols, and now they've got a two, make it three. Excuse me, man, advantage is Skadoodle has a position that could catch off one on KNG, but he's backing off in the long game angle with an SMG, so that's not going to work. AK-47 comes out with the kill, 24 HP. If he was closer, it would have been a kill for Skadoodle instead. We didn't know he was there. And Stewie, if there's anything in it, they go B, plant, and leave him alone, but I doubt they will. Five on one. Just want to make sure they keep all five players alive here. I don't mind this slow pace from Immortals. Eradicate all risks. They will go towards high weight. So we could actually get a couple of frags here. That's the bomb by itself. Now, Immortals starting to make mistakes. They should still win the round here, but definitely get a bit problematic. Ooh. KNG well recovered there. Low HP could have dropped, but only one kill given away. That's absolutely fine. Almost certainly an eco here for Cloud9. Stewie's just straight in there with a the UMP purchase. Okay. 
think he did at least. Yeah, UMP on the floor. So is this a force buy? Did he accidentally do that? No one else seems to be buying. Okay, so Automatic gets the body armor. So he takes him down to 1700. It's a partial buy by the looks of things. UMP for Shroud. Currently, you have to frag. And towards check as he goes. Fast mid play though, pretty standard stuff. Honey watching towards B storage. With that AWP, mid control obtained. Should be quite a clean round here for the Immortals as KMG looks towards A. Nade goes inside of the site and does damage to automatic. KMG's in the jar off middle. They got through the vent. Shroud manages one this time, and then Skadoodle's close enough. He can turn around, get the kill, and return. There's two guns there. They're going to boost vents. And thankfully, they get the job done before Henny gets in position. But Cloud9's actually got something to work with now. Certainly do, as Automatic takes down KNG. That's three guns grabbed, all of which are in the hands of players with armor. Well, I shouldn't say all. Doodle doesn't, but the guns don't go to anyone that's armorless rather than a player with armor. Looking very promising now for Cloud9. And it's to upgrade to AK 47. Zay Shroud gets that kill with the UMP. Just up to steal now. He's in the four versus one. Low HP for him. And we're currently positioned towards B storage. So on his back, but Skadoodle finds the final shot. KNG helping him out a little bit there as well, apparently. So, Cloud9 on a much needed round. Helps stabilize things. They managed to take three AKs and a dig onto the next round. So, still a full buy for Immortals. I think some players on pistols, actually, three Tech Nines. Not as good as I thought it would be. 3 1, Cloud9, after a few blunders in the first few rounds, managed to balance things out with a partial buy victory there. So, that's not too bad. Skadoodle back on the AWP this time. As we get into round number five, steal a KNG, the only players with rifles here. Good spawn towards middle. That's for bolts. I think got the tech knives. Can't really do that much with it. Flash through. Gonna be seeing if he can get some control here. Smoke deployed towards connector and the highway box. Might find two players here at the sandbag. Why are they by themselves? It's really strange to see that kind of setup. Bolts finds both. Oh, bolts just shoots his teammate in the head as they run by. And Shroud's gonna make up for it. Good shot on the second one. Better on the M4 than the USP, apparently, but he smoked off now. Mid's going to back off because they know that they've lost the element of highway toward A, even though A's wide open. So I take it back. They're going to go back down that direction, grab the gun at the very least. What's the call really in this? I think fence. A lot of noise to make through vents, considering I said it was open, as I mentioned. The truck was the only spot they had to worry about, but it's Skadoodle. They would have known that Skadoodle. It's going to watch out to be second shot success. He's on a roll now. He's, I'm going to say, on fire, but he literally is. As there's a Molotov down in front of him, he still finds the kill through the flames. Nice work by Skadoodle there. That round could have been disastrous. Bolts rushing middle with a flashbang. I'm not sure why both Cloud9 players get towards that standby position. Sure, you have the old bait and switch mentality, but one Molotov gets deployed there, they're absolutely done for. Shroud recovers the round with two M4 kills, funnels them back towards B, and Skadoodle mows them down. Automatics purchase an M249. Gonna have to drop that. Uh, does he have to drop it? Um, well, it's an old it's weapon. Valve use. rules. I know. I think the Negev's probably. Oh right, Negev. Sorry. Yeah, M249. the M249. I just fine. consider those the same weapon in my head, because no one uses either. But you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. He has to drop that. That's gonna hurt the money-wise down the road. It might have been the Negev. I'm not 100% sure what they actually look like. It looks like the M249 to me. I'm sure I'll be correct. Uh, if you could look at the amount of money he spent, you would know. So Shroud purchased it. No. Or automatic did. Let's have a look. Good shot. Skadoodle takes down Lucas. Stewie, though, takes out K and G. Time to steal to try and walk back in the site. Quick shots, but Henny, Bolts, and Steel are all not doing well. Not doing well at all. So this round goes to Cloud9. Skadoodle just needs to stay out of the wars, and he'll be fine. Solid round of Cloud9 here, all things considered. I don't know the gun code. What, what is 249 and, and it's B2 I don't, I don't something. I like that in CSGO. Oh, uh, yeah, you bind on everything. Yeah, like in, in Source 1.6, I, I memorized everything, but it's not, it's just, I don't know why they didn't carry over the same system. Obviously, they have different weapons and stuff, but it, it's not as fluid to buy like that in CSGO. No one really does it, I don't think. I do, it's just I'm lazy to, too lazy to make a config that means I would do less work in the end. Logic? Um... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Point is he bought it and dropped it. Yeah, it might have been a negative, which would have been $2,000 these days. That's not a big deal. It looked like the empty yep. for me, but I think I'm wrong. Um, but round number seven, four AKs, Galil. 
And we get to round number seven here. Clean sweep there for Cloud9, looking very good as they start to stabilize now. The all powerful Skidoodle once again, of course. No orb for Immortals. And we've seen how good KMG and Henny have been with that weapon, especially on this map in the past. Well, Henny can be an absolute monster on cash, especially on the T side. One of the chances round at least. Automatic still on the UMP. Round number seven. Another boost up towards middle. Fast through. Very quick indeed. And that's a simple frag for Skidoodle. Might want to fall back here, but wants a bit more action, it seems. Definitely falls back here. Yeah, he's going to get around the corner. Prop up that close wall too much. In fact, ooh, he's going to rotate Apex-esque. Question is, does he retake Z? Does he try and retake Z connector? He's got a gap in the smoke right now, so he can see through that smoke. So if anyone tries to walk in, he's happy to hold that angle. Yeah, he just missed it, but he did have a good gap. But I believe you. Point is, like, Apex would push back through with the rifle, where Skadoodle's yeah. on an op. He has to be more complacent to sit back. Towards B we go. B split will be coming in. Scoodle knows it. He's going to the upper ramp. And two players there as well. So it's looking very good for Cloud9. The setup's nice. Nothing in Shroud to receive. Automatic pushing the back tracks as well. So they've locked them in. Nothing. Waiting. Across the F4. Can't hit the headshots. Goes back from what will. Finds two before KNG responds, but that just breaks Shroud out of his corner. Ah. And he's got the fight. Automatic has the final kill. Six to one for Cloud9, looking very good on their CT side thus far. Aside from the pistol round and the ensuing. Yeah, they're looking great. It was a shaky start. Rounds that were just about recovered, but looking phenomenal at the moment in terms of the money situation, broken down Immortals financially. This could be on Deagles here, not even a partial buy available. Fourth stage loss bonus, no armor purchase. One flashbang means he's going to stick together, choose a position, maybe towards a main flash through. Hope for the best, see if he can get a trade going on. So they're going towards Squeaky Door this time. Four players in that direction. Bolts towards middle, suggesting, oh, we might be coming towards mid again. Automatic. Getting information now. He gets in towards a main. Doesn't find anyone. This could fall apart with. Good little watching him. This is that first shot, but he just simply comes out, gets two. That's all again now. Now this gets interesting. Three on three, and they've got the AWP to work with. The plant will be coming in imminently. Good shot, Stewie. Caught in the open though afterward. Bit of a rat in a cage, Henry. Absolutely. Just like you, full of rage. Can't deny that. That shoulder, that is far too obvious. Nothing walks out, Bolt's able to find the kill. Good shot, Shroud. He's gonna try and make up for things. Molotov to put him in the corner, try and force him around the back of it. Knows he can't go that way nice. now that it's deployed. And a smart tactical execution from Shroud, who shoots beside his dead body. That was actually very well played by Shroud there. Gets a nice first shot in the 2v1 situation. Could have got really scary for him. Another round recovered. Perfect extensory means that Terrace has to face and sit in the flames and hope for the best. He's just going to be going down with the ship at that point. If he hits that shot on Shroud, he wins the round, but he'd probably die either way. Can't do it. Shroud takes the kill and the round indeed. That was an Ecos for Immortals getting the plan down there. And four kills is not too bad at all. Double up set up on the T side. This is something I've criticized them for. It seems like they're trying to force this. Almost every single map, every situation, get the double orbs out. You can't really argue with sometimes KNG and Henny are very good orbers. KNG obviously the latest addition to the squad. Double orb for Stewie and Skidoodle as well. So the first real gun round of the game. Lots of wall bangs coming in. Nothing connecting just yet. Need to be careful. Almost found Lucas's head there. I need to be jumping up, taking shots in the middle as well. And this could be another A7 attack to the squeaky door. Opens it up for one of the orbers, I believe. Indeed, that's KNG looking towards highway. Stewie's trying to watch into A main. If he shoots too carelessly, he'll wall his teammate. Put a needle right into his buttocks. Butt needles suck. Good shot, automatic downed by Lucas, though, immediately after. Stewie's still in a good position. Ooh. Reads it like a book. And he's got more to play for inside of A main as Lucas is going to get in position. Quick flash in, makes him think he's going to try and push through, but he's not. He's back into quad, shutting the door. And holding patiently inside of the site with Shroud on highway. Another round potentially recovered here by Cloud9 after losing the first few picks. It seemed like it was done for. Stewie steps up, though, with the AWP. Two kills. Survives as well. Shuts the door. 
And now has a chance for a couple more. We'll see what he can do here. Molotov towards the forklift position. Low HP on bolts. Just seven to work with here. And Stewie at this point is trying to deny the plan. That's all his objective is. 13 seconds. Might get the collateral. Gets one. Now it's bolts on low HP in a two versus one situation. Can't find that frag. The significant damage to will finish things off. And Cloud9 really coming to life here now on cash. Inferno, their map pick was disappointing, but it's looking much better. We might have a pause from Immortals. No plant. The maximum loss bonus means they can buy once again. Three players on just about 5k. No pause coming in. This is the grand final third map is just joining us. Both teams are going to the major qualifier, but this is for the lion's share of the prize pot, which is $50,000 here at the America's Minor. Yeah, I mean, and finally a chance to beat Immortals in a best of three on land, which is, is I mean, if Stewie's comments in the, in the video were anything to go by, is a step in the right direction. Just a bit of a Miss Molotov thrown out. Won't cover the backside of the boost, so therefore they could just be sitting there waiting behind the canopy. Nade just drills nothing. Got a 55 HP. So he waits for someone to push through from useless. Good damage done so far, you're absolutely right, but no frags obtained. Skidoodle still holding towards middle. It seems like he's being stopping ground right now. And Stewie going down first at the A-bombs after recovering the situation in the previous. He's the first player to drop here. KNG, we said he's good with the rifles. Might just commit to the A-side. Skidoodle, the only player there. Trying to stop anyone crossing over. And Henny, he chimes in as well. Five on three, surely around now for Immortals. Bolts with nothing down. Certainly confirms that Shroud, the last alive. Pulsating ticker will bleed itself out. Looks that way, doesn't it? Shroud. Money's not great, you know, for Cloud9. They've won six rounds in a row, but every single round, two players surviving, one player surviving, four, four, three. So they've been kept relatively modest. Shroud needs to save his AK for a counter fire. Doesn't happen. So they've got 12k in Skadoodle, so he can drop maybe an M4 and a UMP and still buy the AWP. Shroud can buy, so they certainly will get into this one. It's just to be balancing the books. Let's see whether Skadoodle buys the AWP. So yeah, there's the UMP, and then Skadoodle will just be on the AWP himself. So he dropped an M4. Stewie purchased the UMP, so it's pretty decent. No kits purchased. That's a bit of a problem. Nothing has exactly $400, so surely he picks one up. They lose it to a defuse now. They could have bought a defuse kit. They had exactly enough on nothing's remaining balance to get it. Interesting that he didn't, but... Let's see how this works out for them. First kill goes in favor of Bolts. Very fast towards middle. Good shot. Skadoodle just waiting it out. KNG was a little bit desperate, I think, to try and find an opening. Bolts as well. Mm. Up from mid, but sprayed at by nothing. And now he'll throw a nade back and say, don't do that again. Oh, I... You gotta, you gotta hate timing sometimes, don't you? Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. A2. This would be a devastating round for Immortals to lose, right? They won the previous because it's a reset. That lost bonus they built up of six rounds is now being diminished. That's getting the first pick. Skidoodle finds one in the form of KAG towards B storage. And now time stands still. As we hold in the default, looks like a final A commitment coming in from Immortals. 55 seconds remaining. Have one smoke. That'll probably be used towards Highway, the most common smoke on the map. A big pickup by Bold Stewie. Finding the aim there to guarantee the frag. Here they go. Miss shots. Skadoodle leaves him hugging the wall. He can hide himself there, meaning they've got to bypass the forklift, which they did do, but unfortunately missed the shot on steel, which put him down. So it's nothing to rotate back up highway. And two players at Truck is inside of the A site. The bomb is just getting toward the default now for steel. No Molotov thrown from the CT side. And a 2 2 on retake. Shots through. Nothing's found the first kill. It's steel that desperately needs to hold this off given the situation with money. Given everything that Cloud9's already accomplished in this half, they'll tap the bomb. Steel knows they're both inside the site. Now they've lost track, but he's gone behind them. But nothing's looking the right way. He is indeed. Great work by Nothing there. He had to delay the plant considerably. We're dropping the incendiary right on the site. Gets him his teammates some time to back him up. Shroud with the AWP. 
Uh, didn't actually have to do much there at all. Nothing with the spray through the smoke to find the Orpa towards the forklift. Still there, didn't really have much to welcome. The plant comes in, he has to push around the bomb site. They buy enough time, touch the bomb. He has to go with the face, take him down together. Very good stuff, and that's another round for Cloud9. Still a buy available for Immortals with the bomb plant coming in. It is a reset, but they squeeze out by just about four AKs and AWP. Decent utility as well. This is a very big round for them. Win this, probably means a double EK for Cloud9. And they get right back in this game, lose it. And look at the Nico themselves. 9 2, Cloud9. Looking very good here on cash so far. Round number 12, double orb set up for the CTs. Pushing the storage as well. Stewie misses the shot. Looking to get the refrag here. But it's going to scoot it all strikes first. Takes down KNG. And that's the orb as well. So, Bolts finds another frag, but he seems to know Stewie's there. Good play, Bolts certainly knew Stewie was there. This time they should be able to convert the round if he's that deep inside of the B site. But the bomb. So much more they made. Oh, automatic. If he'd won that kill, could have actually been in the right position at the right time. Yeah, could have led to something brilliant. But Cloud9, like we said, got to be eek after this one, after the previous round coming down to the two versus one. Very nice stuff from Immortals there. Fast and concise round, pushing it towards middle once again, finding those picks in the B storage. It was Stewie. If he lands that first orb, sure they can fall back, but he didn't. Locked himself into that first box. And now, like we said, probably eco even for the last round. They might have just forced this one. I think they are, yeah. It would have been double eco regardless. He might as well go for it. CZs, UMP. Can be very problematic to hold these off. What's the play, though? Do they go aggressive? Move towards Squeaky Door, get that first pick. Stewie loves doing that. It's good at all. Saving his money. He's got 2K. Trying to get the all up of the last round, potentially. Hobbs. Behind. Sandbags, but also at the bottom of Highway, which means Stewie can't peek aggressively. The shadow in that position. I think that one's actually just as bad as the Dust 2 entry point at long. Sure. Because all they do is pre-fire in and they get the kill if you're in a wide enough spot. Lucas is going to get Stewie back, though, so we sit to three versus three. Nine rounds all ready for Cloud9. Don't rest on your laurels. Go for everything. And he's going to pull back a shot on something. And the AK at A will take down two. Well recovered there by Immortals after losing the first two frags. That was a bit scary, but Bolts boosted up, gets those two frags, and then at that point, with the reaction, pushes to come in from the CT side. And he with two kills towards A, and the orb shot in B storage as well takes down nothing. And as we said, this would have been a double eco situation. They forced ball in the previous rounds, and now they are full eco for the last round. It's going to be almost guaranteed five rounds in total for Immortals. Comes down to number 15 as to whether Cloud9 can find double digits here on cash. P2000s, P250s, a couple of flashbangs, very unlikely to do much more than this round than one, maybe two kills. And an easy, oh, okay, X-ray a bit misleading there. I thought they were coming around a connector. They're actually heading towards B. Three man stacked towards the B side for Cloud9. Steel. Smokes off towards the connector. It's he that Molotov's in the vent as well from inside a bit, so not the one lobbed over top of drop. Gone, Immortals have a chance to bring this back. 9-5, potentially 6. With a slow mid-control play yet again. Nothing is waiting to time this. To pop out. Bolts won't allow it to be easily done. Three players, though. Surely one's got to get him. Or does he spray them all down? It seems... It's the ladder as Immortals pick up five. Quite a simple round there. As it is straight through those final few kills towards middle. Bolts, great tournament him so far. He's got 17 kills, 10 deaths. The closest to him on his team is going to be Steel with eight. Same story for KNG as well. Bolts doing a great job of finding key frags. And that's now three rounds in a row for Immortals. As you go into the final round, I think Skidoo we can get an orb just about. I don't think it's Glass Cannon. Get some body armor. There it is, yeah. So, difficult in terms of the final buy. No kits once again. No head armor, that's not a big deal against the Orbs and the AKs. The Shroud down to the Famous. Oh no, look at the double digits here once again, fast towards mid. They know the utilities will be very low for the CTs, more than half an Orbs, so they run out once again. Mid control obtained nice and early. It's a boost towards A, it is indeed. Stewie up in the Shroud spot, funny enough. Why is that funny? Because we call it Shroud and Shroud's on this team. I know, I was just trying to... Sorry, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I like Freakazoid, but I don't want to sit beside him in AA or whatever he's in. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, you got it. I got it. So an op to open B. AK going to swing in as soon as the op finds an Ooh. angle that's favorable. The nade does reasonable damage. And he's got to be very careful. He's coming around with 12. Kanji does make it to checker, though. Spots. Oh, watch the up-close push. Automatic's going to rotate back around, but it's the push wide. Nothing actually gets Kanji, and nothing tries to go further, but he was already lowered from that first fight, so it's quite a difficult task for him to try and hold off as Bolts goes to 11. And Automatic walks back into sight, timing everything. Two quick kills for him. Bomb down to the deck. And Steel manages to slide underneath of Heaven. He could catch them off. Steel knows that Automatic looks for him. And that calls Shroud to the aid. Double digits obtained there for Cloud9. Difficult final buy for them with just the M4s, no kits, and a Famas, but they make it work. Good names at the start towards an ensuing Immortals of the Beast Storage area, and it's going to be automatic, like you said, stepping up. He's had quite the quiet game here on Cash. He's been up and down this tournament, I have to say, generally. Eight kills, 12 deaths. Skadoodle, once again, posting great numbers. 16 for eight. Same story for Bolts as well. What a monster performance he's had here in the grand final. 18 kills, 11 deaths. We go into the pistol. Very, very important one. If Cloud9 can pick this up, potentially mean three rounds in a row, it's going to be 13-5, and it might just find them their first tournament victory since Pro League Finals last year in Sao Paulo. Yeah, I wouldn't call this one a premiere. Obviously, no. it's minor. That one was a little bit more significant, but yeah, they all count, and, uh, and this is going to be a big thing for them to have under their belt heading into the qualifier in two weeks, I think, from this point. I think we fly back, what, the 27th? Yeah, something like that. It's right before Cologne. I think it's the 27th that we fly out back. Bolt 17 HP already pushed Bomb back down. behind the car. Bomb is planted already for Cloud9. Got a couple of decoys there for the old heat and tricks as well. See if they can pull those ones out. Might as well. Bounce around the corner, then face. Try and get the city to turn around. Penny. Trying to get the shot down inside of the Cypher Automatic. Swings out. After Henny gets one automatic, answers with more than that. He may get a third as well, and certainly manages to do so toward the truck, and it's Chaos and Sue. And Henny downed its 11 rounds Cloud9, so I'm, I'm impressed. They're in a good position now to take some charge in this. They've got to avoid the anti-eco situation. They haven't been the yeah, best at that all weekend, They have fair. not. They've been pretty shocking at it, to be honest. But Automatic, as I call him out, for having a quiet first half, he steps up tremendously there. With the Glock, a very simple round there for Cloud9. Not a single bit of utility purchase apart from those decoys I referenced earlier. Five sets of armor, nothing watching middle. Fast attack on A. A lot of teams play the retake on the A side of the map. They get the bomb down, and it's a real difficult situation for the CT. They will be forced back into this round. Scout, Deagles, and CZ. But like you said, this team, Cloud9, do struggle to win these rounds. Stuart with a good start, though. Might find two frags here. There's significant damage to the Scout player. Henny, as the bell rings, that's the frag bell. Sorry about that. I told you it was very addicting. Not just the coffee. The frag bell, I like it. We used to have one of those at Facebook. We did. We had a little grenade. What do you call it? We, we actually used to ring it. We went so insane. We used to ring it every time something happened. Uh, eco bell? Save bomb bell? I think it was the bomb bell, wasn't it? No, it was something, like, something funny that happened. We had bing, there it is. Yeah. With a knife. Let's go back know. and watch all of season one until we can figure out what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so important. I'll do it if you're not going to invest the time. Well. Well. Ooh. Well. Well, well, well. Well, Henry. It's over toward B. Stewie's going to lead the way. Smoke down toward Tree and an AK with his shot and indecision. as an off angle from Steel. There it is. A sigh of relief, I think, would be coming in from Cloud9. As we pointed out throughout this tournament, they really have struggled these second round. anti a lot. it's the same sort of a lot of these uh, American teams at this event. NRG comes to mind as well. And, uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a rough ride for them in that sense. But here we go. This is looking much better. Henny, last player remaining, 32 HP, scout in hand. Even if he saves it, it's not really a big deal. He'll be detected at this point. MP7, nothing really much gives away. It's going to be automatic to get the final kill there. Four players surviving, has to be an eco now. 13 5 comes in. So much pressure now for the Immortal side. They've lost that round, meaning they'll be limited on the first gun round as well. So, L9 could win this convincingly after looking quite shoddy on Inferno. This is a much better performance from them. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves yet. They're not tested with guns as of yet. We've seen Stranger Things this weekend. But I mean, that, that bonus round, right? And the lack yeah, of yeah, head yeah. armor, potentially, that could, that could just do it in. That's right, the, the pressure's towards Immortals right now. Oh, absolutely. No question. I'm yeah. just saying we've seen some strange comebacks oh, yeah. this weekend. I think uh, game one today, 
the stack. CLG versus Lumi. Five players here, boys. Be careful. The bombs on the other side of the map, which is good news. Well, they've spotted one. They'll spot two and three. They didn't actually spot two. So it's oh, getting beat. I don't think Automatic <laughs> saw the guy above Red Crate. No need to challenge. Scope on the bomb. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, Tim's going to try and hold him in position. That's the guy I'm talking about. Same spot. KNG manages to hit it, so Automatic just didn't see it. Bombs planted. Those you say they'll boost up to make sure no one's going to come through vents with the MAC-10, which is, the, I think, a good position to put this gun in because it can afford to be aggressive right now. I'm going to rotate through CT, though. And they're going to try and save the gun that Henny's picked up as well. Watch where that is. It's that truck, and nothing's slipping up highway, but Henny knows that very likely that's the only way they can get to him, so I don't think they're going to get that AK back. They will get that shot through the smoke from nothing. They need to save that AK. Like I don't right. know that they will, actually. I lied. I didn't think they'd get that far. I thought they had Stewie covered off. Ooh, we might recover the AK, no. potentially. No, it's not going to happen. Bomb's going to kill him. You're right. 13-5 comes in. Money's not as bad as I thought it would be. They can get the M4s out. Probably have to go with some body armor here. All for KNG as well. So with two players with body armor. AWP's out. No incendiaries, though. These are the rounds. You're going super fast. And what I'm calling right now, you're licking your lips. You're thinking, right, we've got the 13-5 lead. We know the money's going to be low after the force behind the second. I've got an MP7 with the team as well. Let's just choose one area. Try and trade frags. They won't have incendiaries to slow us down. I'm going to be boosting our middle, going as fast as I possibly can. Rush B. This is good, Matt. I like this as well. It's fast. It's audacious. Does it work out? Is this the point where Cloud9 win the tournament? Well, they've got the first kill. Stewie starts it. MP7. We haven't seen that gun in ages, it seems. This is what we wanted from Cloud9. Perfect call from Stewie here. And he's trying to do what he can, but he's been detected. He's low HP. Should be round over. Four on two. But there it is. Okay, good work. Perfect call. I love it. Textbook. Henry's happy. We like to see that. You love to see it. That's sometimes like in-game leaders struggle with this kind of... That situation, they, they feel like... Think about Astralis against VP in the yeah. major and final. Have you slowed things down, allowed them to get the picks and work that aim? You want to be overwhelming them, the fact they haven't got utility or an AWP. You just want to get in their faces and uh, shut them down. Perfect. Bolt still has a chance this one, but no kit. Position given away, that should be it now. But Cloud9, 14 rounds, Immortals 5. I might have been getting ahead of myself saying this wins the tournament, but the money's now completely ruined for Immortals. Traditionally, you have to eco after this round, but if Bolt saves the M4, they might be able to force around it. We know how good... Immortals are with the pistols. Good it on the now. I don't think they'll find him. Fourth safe loss bonus. 3k per player. 14-5. As we're homing in on tournament point. What's the play map? Do you buy around this? What do you no. think? Oh, they're doing it. They're doing it. Well, they don't want to play for overtime. I mean, again, it's it's not like it is a loss in a way. It is a loss. But it's they're already in the major qualifier. Yeah. So you might as well play for everything, I guess. Go all out. The fact they said the M4 makes it viable, at least. They can get one over room for and UMPs. That's the gun that's really breaking the economy in this game. The fact that you even have this option to still have a viable round after that, you shouldn't. Like, that should just be costing you completely because you forced one in the second round, but CSGO for you in general. Happy Henry goes back to Jaded <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're fine. You're going to be okay. We'll all get through this. We'll reset our sleep clocks. Start the E, or excuse me, the yeah, the EU miner next week. Same location, 12 hours of difference. Somehow it takes down bolts. 10 hours difference, truthfully. That's this pick to start it off. The Cloud9 really, really would have wanted. This flash goes into the side. It partially catches off KNG, but they backed off of a mid control becoming a factor, though. Three over the drop. Lucas peeking toward main garage, but not any closer. We'll see. Nothing, trying to check to see if anyone's gotten clever and gotten close. He's going to go back for more. Gotta be careful, Cloud9. They've already given away their lead. Can't afford to give up more. Skadoodle wants to chase them down. Good flash in. Spots the second top highway as well, but an opening kill that will thin the defense even further. Now, the player at Squeaky might be misleading because there's a push toward a main. If they can win back highway... They definitely win back the ace site. Now, it's a matter of patience for KNG if they walk up highway and don't consider the fact that he's there. 30 seconds remaining. Shroud by himself the ace site. Does he just walk in and try to give his kill away? I think he dies. If he does, KNG in a storage pretty much counters him fully. They're waiting for Shroud to maybe cause a distraction here. Then they go into the B site. Or they might decide to pin to A as well. That would be the correct play. KNG becomes almost useless at this point. Or does he? Spots one. Yeah, this is what I think he's going to do. He's just going to sit. They're going to... Oh, he's going to go more aggressive. Bad. Shroud, very, very good heads-up play. Because I thought, with killing two and eight early, 
they wouldn't expect him to be there, and he pushed through to A main. Saw two, and obviously he was expecting perhaps the same thing, but now it is going to be map. Tournament points for Cloud9, 15 to 5 over Immortals on cash. One to go. And not a lot of money for the CTs, to be fair. 10 rounds. Cloud9 have got to guarantee themselves first place. Just to reiterate, this is the major, well, the minor, America's minor. It's you're fighting for a spot at the major qualifier. Both teams have already got that. This is just for prize money at this point. Still, it's a large chunk of change, 50k on the line. So both, both teams definitely gunning for this. And Cloud9, it'd be nice then to pick up a tournament victory. It's been so long for them since November. So they've really made a significant dent in the tournament. Taking down Immortals, who they got 2 0 by earlier in uh, the group stage in the playoffs. So this would be a nice recovery from them. Might help boost morale. They know how close they are. I can see they can tasting it. Holding up now. Then the money's low. Four UMPs, one and four. No orbs. It's holding up. Waiting for any sort of aggression from the CT side right now. Immortals need 10 in a row just to force overtime. Very unlikely, but they win this round. We know Cloud9 do trouble, do find trouble to close our games. Door for Shroud. Plus closes it, trying to bait in some shots, figure out where exactly the CTs are set up inside of the site. Automatic's also gotten over top of mid. Oh, they're gonna push Shroud. He's gotta be careful with the gun switch. It's nice. Gets it back in time. K and G inside of the door goes down. Shroud's got the opener. They're gonna try and push A main to compensate with a flash in. Brief exchange with nothing who will make the call. And they'll fall back to go 2-2 two -two on B and A. Mid wide opened. Tension starts to ri rise now as we get to the 30 second mark. Two players waiting in B. UMPs to defend. They have got an incendiary to hold them off. He deploys this right now. It's going to be good. Shroud trying to delay them as much as he can. The bomb runs in first. This could be a blunder. Steal. Trying to wait in the site, has got help from Lucas because him getting a kill means they haven't spotted Steel, but he's forced out. Skadoodle gets him down, it's all onto Lucas. And Cloud9 coming from the lower bracket, through smoke no less, are gonna take down Immortals, win the North American Miner. Take first seed going into the Swiss system qualification stage, which they'll be joined by Immortals, but well done. They yeah. won the tournament. Well done. It's, like I said, been an absolute long time since well done, Cloud9. Pro League. And Immortals, they were the absolute favorites coming to this one. They look great. Blew them out of the water early in the stages of the tournament as well. Not a huge deal, just prize money. They both make it to the majors, uh, major qualifier. And in terms of seeding, it's a Swiss format tournament, so it doesn't really matter that much. It's the first game, I guess. You might get an easier path. I'm not really sure how that works. But still, Cloud9 looking good. Dropped off significantly on Inferno, I have to say. They really need yeah, to work on this bad. play style. They cannot actually... They can actually rely on that maybe it's going forward. I think that hybrid style of loose and kind of structure play needs to be defined further. They need to work out who's going to be calling and actually going to be making that situation work out for them. Well, let's, uh, I, I think we can, you know, now that we've gone through this, this big time zone change, us staying up all night every day, we, we should talk about this together. So we're going to bring in the frog, the beaver, and the bear. And discuss it with you. Uh, oh, just just hello. the frog, apparently. Hi. So far, just the frog, I'm sure. There oh, you there go. There you go. There you go. Um, oh. Firstly, I just want to say I'm so glad you only just found that cup with a bell on it. Because I actually found it. If you'd have had that for the last four it. days, I don't think I'd yeah, be there anymore. That's obnoxious. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Look at it. It's absolutely brilliant. Amazing is one word for it, I suppose. Yeah. Chaps, what do you it's think fun. of that game? You guys just aren't on my level. It was uh, it was uh, quick and hard and fast. It's everything like it, right? Cloud9 yeah. uh, Cloud have broken the curse or their land curse against the mortals. That's good to see. Yeah, That's true, actually. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? And yeah. at the beginning of this tournament, you'd say immortals were probably the favorites on paper. Then looked that way through the playoff bracket as well, taking down Cloud9 2-0. Mm -hmm. We thought that would be it. They'd be winning it hands down. But... After losing a map as well, Cloud9 looked dominant there on the final map. I think it was important that they kept up the pace on Inferno, right? It looked silly them constantly going aggressive on that CT side, even though it wasn't working. But carrying it through to this last map was, I think, a factor that uh, got them across the line in the end. Yeah, absolutely agree. It's nice to see them winning a tournament. Uh, Shroud has some decent performances in the last map. Looked quiet in the grand final. It was nice to see him kind of step up. We've obviously been talking about him a lot recently with his current kind of topic of does he leave the team? Does he stay with it? Looking promising, at least towards the end there. Um, yeah. They need to really address this issue, though, of, I think, of like five players arriving at the right time. It seems yeah. up and down for this tournament, right? We've had the, the tag team yeah. duo looking poor. Skadoodles looked amazing throughout. I think that's helped yeah, him he's out been significantly. The most, consistent. most improved as well. Yeah. For, for a long time, we've been, I guess, thinking we need more from Skadoodle. And, a fi and finally, he's shown up. And I would say, you know, over this whole tournament, his impact has, has been one of the biggest, uh, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I would, even, I would even guess he's the mummy MVP of this last map. 
He might be. I'm sure we'll go on to that in a moment. Mm. I, I guess we've got to uh, go through the uh, the split screen bit first, but I'm little sure man. we will. We will go. Little man. Yeah. Little man. Little man. <laughs> Kill that meme fully before we finish. Yeah, yeah. you you happen. you brought a meme to us, James. Yes, I'm <laughs> I'm happy about that. That's I that's think good. it's time for okay. us to say our goodbyes. Thank you for watching us. We've had fun. It's been a roller Thank coaster. You. Congratulations, Cloud Nine. We'll leave you guys to it. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> um, yes. North so Stu was saying in the interview we saw uh, halfway through this best of three. He said, yes. My kind of in-game leadership uh, is kind of puggy-based. Yes. We definitely saw that in this best of three, right? We saw that prevail. So the CT side, when they're on the CT side, I remember something from the EPL finals last year that, that they were talking about, whereas they really just focused on their own zones and, and try locking that down. And I think we saw that here on, on this last map because there was so much aggression coming out. It seemed like they always had map position and flanks on the way. Whenever uh, the Immortals guys wanted to go to a bomb site, they were always under an assault. And that's the best type of Cloud9, I think, fighting under chaos. I've mentioned it time and time again, and that's when I think they can thrive. It's just... That's something that's difficult to replicate all the time. They've managed to do it here, and I think that pushed them across the, the line, obviously, for this dominant grand final win against the Mortals. Yeah. Oh, I, I, it was fast-paced, action-packed, balls to the wall counter-strike. And look, mm. it's not the most beautiful, it's not the most structured CS. We did see glimpses of it where Cloud9 were able to dial it back and maybe approach the rounds with a bit more uh, sensibility. Uh, and they're even able to turn those around, but it needs to be a mixture of both. They can't just rely on running at their opponent and mm -hmm. hoping to find smokes and frags and all those instances. That was a lovely shot by Kanji. Yeah. Uh, Immortals, they were caught off guard by a lot of this, I, I think, and weren't really able to stabilize. And that is kind of the story of what we saw in this first uh, best of three that these two teams played against each other in the upper bracket final was Immortals were the one running over Cloud9. I'm really curious if this will be a trend that's going to continue in the future. That you know, now you said the, cur the curse has been broken. Yeah. We've seen that in the past, where you know that happens, and suddenly you know a team takes over, and now they're doing really well on land. You know, even even if it's a, a match of, of, of shall we say sort of uh, less significance in in a in a sort of grander scheme of mm -hmm. things, um, just the just getting it out of the way and saying, oh, we could beat them. Uh, we've actually done it now. Now they can do it again and again, maybe. The mental blocks are usually yeah. the hardest blocks, right? And even if it, that's all it was, it wasn't actually like a playstyle thing. It was literally just they had it in the back of their head subconsciously that they could never beat Immortals or that they always lost. And that was uh, tripping them up when they got into these circumstances when games got close. They've broken that now, so they know that they can do it. As you say, maybe, you know, it didn't seem like it was in, as intense as what it possibly could be, but a win's a win. Yeah. And you're always going to take the W. So how do we think these teams will fare now going into the major qualifier? Well, uh, look at the mix of teams there at the moment, right? It, it's pretty even. Like, everybody is around this same patch, I find. The ones who are always the underdogs or the scariest teams in these situations are the ones from the CIS minor, right? Yeah, I agree. And that's because they're kind of in a world of their own. I know we do have Tyloo coming in from uh, Asia and Renegades who are playing in the North American region, but they've qualified through Asia as well. They're more of a known quantity because we seem to see Tyloo on more of a semi-regular basis. But with the Vega squadrons of the world and, and Tengri, those two teams coming through, completely unknown factors and you're going to be able to look into them you're going to have to do the best homework you can but as we've seen like NIP last time around yeah these uh these CIS teams can can cause some big upsets whether or not these two teams can make it through i would definitely say they're in that can, you would consider them closer to that top 8 yeah, half of the of the major qualifier than say Tengri or Vega squadron but uh it's just going to be and on the day because it is best of ones in swiss format right anything can happen anything's possible yeah yeah it is time for the Mummy MVP for cash. Let's find out. Were you right? It is. Skadoods. Skadoodles. Cool Good man. Yeah. Well. 23 to 8. Yeah. Impressive. I was say, big performance from him again. Yeah, lots of impact. Lot, like consistent skadoodle. I really, I really like the thought of that. He looked much better across the board with other weapons too. And I, I was looking at his, his weapon stats earlier. Still was predominant with the AWP, but we have so many highlights of this guy getting multi frags with the AK pistol. He's getting some huge clutches here, there, and everywhere. No clutches in this game tonight, but I would love to see, you know, maybe taking a look a little bit later, as I will do, his impact overall. I think it was, was huge across all the maps for, for Cloud9. He maybe had one or two where he faltered. But uh, a force to be reckoned with at this event. Yeah, yeah. you agree with that? Anderson? All good. I, I'm yeah. perfectly satisfied with that statement. I'm pretty good at statements. Do we have an? Uh, this is a silly question. So I don't want to throw you as the host under the bus in this it. situation. Do we have an overall event mummy, like the king of the mummies? Not that I know the of. The king of the mummies. Uh, Not that I know of. So I yeah. don't think so. I Maybe haven't been it's told for the next yet. one, Scorpion King. 
What? The yeah, is that, is that the first? That was the first film, right? I don't know if that was the first one. There was a different film. The Rock, The Rock was in that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a Mummy franchise, though. So yeah. I think we're think we're okay there. Okay. There's so two of them. The other ones are with <laughs> here we go. Brendan Fraser, or whatever his name. Yeah, it? he's a he's a funny man, isn't he? Yeah. Speaking of funny men, back to James. Oh, good. Thanks. Let's <laughs> just quickly wrap up the tournament as a whole. As a whole, put a bow on it. Let's put a bow on it. I mean, so I would say I would say what's so remarkable about the way that the major format has managed to uh, evolve over time is the fact that um, it, I would say it used to be that the miners were just things you sort of had to go out the way, almost just sort of yeah. show, and now they're a really serious thing. And even competing in them is means you've made it quite a f long ways, and the t the, the high level is so high, you know. Yep. Um, and going into the actual main head qualifier, it's going to be absolutely madness, you know. And we've got the European qualifier also coming up next week, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so. All of it is just gonna sort of it, it like the, the sort of the, the pyramid that we're building. Just think of the mummy themes. You know, see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm with you. Um, once you get to the very top and actually get to the major, the peak of the pyramid, there it's um, it gets really intense. And I, I think that's that says a lot about how long Counter Strike has come, yeah. even from just like a year and a half ago. I had that thought earlier. I think the vision of the, of the Valve majors and the, and the, the system building towards that major has finally reached the point it should be at. Yes. There are no easy teams who are currently legends. You know, we don't have the flip sides in there and things like that. We only have good teams who are in that top eight at the moment. And that's scary and then the major qualifier itself the eight teams sitting there most of them you would consider dangerous uh, contenders as well to make it back into the into the major so for me we're finally at a point where things are looking scary and the, and the filter system makes sense so this yes. could be uh, one of the greatest majors of all time yeah i actually think that's very true wow wow looking forward to it thank you guys it's been an absolute pleasure sitting on this desk with you thank you very much for summing that up it is time to close out the show. The PGL Americas minor is done. Cloud9 and Immortals are our two teams to go through to the major qualifier. Next week, the European minor is coming up. We still have three teams to find for that major qualifier, so definitely come back next week. Thank you all for sticking with us over the last four days. It's been amazing. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, we'll see you soon.